recording a video game? Uh, oh. Wow. As the tournament announced, right? Have, have y'all played the, the games? Right? Oh, yeah. The games? No, no, no. You have. Some of them. I've got tournaments with those games at my house. You have? You have? So the guys have and the girls have it. That's hilarious. <laughs> I haven't. Played it? Have you played the game? No. No. Okay, well, I'm okay. Leon's fault. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good. But what I have to do uh, to choose turn announcers, you have to say all of the names of all the characters. And you have to do it like in order. You have to say, like, Goku versus, because you never know who's going to fight who. Right. So you have to say, Goku versus, Goku. <laughs> Frieza versus, Frieza. <laughs> Trunks versus, Trunks. And I've done that on every video game so far. And my God, when we get in the booth, Chris Savage is directing all of them so far. He's like, okay, you know what to do, go. And he'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> and he still gets paid, I think, for directing. I think so. Yeah. And still gets the credit, but he's not doing anything. <laughs> Put that up on your YouTubes. <laughs> He, he works his butt off. Yeah, he does. Uh, we, we actually, it's very, it's very interesting. We had a, a, a snafu. We, we had been flying, recording, and um, we hit Frieza's second form, and everything screeched to a halt. I mean, my recording time slowed down. Nothing was working. Sabbath, it, the, it just wasn't going the way we wanted it. I slowed to a crawl, which is really not the way I'm used to working. I'm used to just really just boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm. And um, I came back to the, I, you know, I finished that day. We got everything kind of the way he wanted it. And I left, and I came back the next week. I drove back up. And before we started, because we were like, well, maybe it's a script problem. So he sent, you know, a letter to Bert Meyer and to Mike Potato and said, hey, you know, look, these scripts, stuff's not fitting, da, da, da. I come back the next week. And he says, you know what? He said, I think the problem is my fault. And I was like, really? He said, I think I've steered you wrong on, on this. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing freeze up, lower voice. I said, all the, the arrogance and the attitude and the, the, uh, the, the kind of effeminate quality, I said, I've just lowered the voice. And he said, that's where we've had the problem. He said, freeze a second form is now a bully. He said, Go away from that think bully. The minute he gave me the new direction, uh -huh. yeah. they were back to, to flying again. And but it was really nice because I know a lot of times as a director, if I have if something's not working, so many directors are, are quick to go, well it's the acting. And as a director, I'm like, okay, if this isn't working, what am I not doing? What am I not giving the actor? So it was very nice yeah. to work with a director that said, you know what? I think the problem we're having is something I've done. And so it was, it was really nice. And the minute he realized it and we fixed it, boom, we were flying. So when we hit third form, I said, any differences? He says, bully and even me. I said, okay, cool. And then we were flying. And, and that's, that's the benefit of having a good director, yes. right? And a good director is, is, is somebody who, a director is just a guy. You know, there's, they're, they're like, uh, um, you know, the Hippocratic Oath doctors take, do no harm. And the same thing as a director, yeah. just do no harm, just don't screw it up. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm reading this, uh, and if you haven't read it yet, you should read it because it's awesome. This uh, new book by David Mamet called Theater. I haven't read that yet. I've got it, I haven't read it yet. It's fantastic and it's hilarious. And, uh, you know, he basically says that everyone overworks in the entertainment field, and they do. Everyone's busy, busy, yep. busy justifying their job. And for the most part, people don't have to, because if you just do the do basic amount of your job, then, yeah, I mean, you're just there to tell a story. 
and uh, the director is there to, you know, in, the, the, in theater, yeah, in theater, he says basically the director is there to uh, to uh, show up, uh, tell the director, tell the actors uh, where where to go on stage, and leave the theater and smoke a cigarette. And that's pretty much what the director should do in theater. <laughs> and you know, in voice acting, if, if you've got if you've got good actors, I, if, I yeah, that. if you've got good actors, if you yes. and again, if you've done your job as a director, ninety percent of the, of the work as a director well, is casting well, is absolutely. Then you you've done you know you've, you've worked hard and you've done a good job, but. Uh, I think a lot of time is spent in the entertainment business across the board, uh, overthinking and uh, overworking. Yeah, absolutely. And everything should be stripped down to its, to, to, to its base yeah. form of storytelling. Yes, I, I agree with you. It was the other day, um, uh, Chris had to leave for something for a while, and so Raleigh and I just kept going. He's like, well, Raleigh's been my, uh, you know, Raleigh is his, his second in terms of directing. He'll just while he will cover. And he's, he's like, and you're a director, he said, so, and you know this character now. So you guys keep going, and he had to go record something up at the foundation, so he had to drive out there and drive back. So we had finished like an episode and a half. So then we were pretty insistent that he proof everything to make sure that it's what he wanted. As, because my bottom line as an actor is I'm going to try to give the director what they want. That's, that's my job. And, um, and so he came back, and he said something really unique. He said, and this is what I like about working with him. He said, you know, he said, a lot of the reads are not the direction I would have taken as a director. He said, but they really work, and they're really interesting, and I would never have thought of them. And I'm so glad for this scene, because it was a really pivotal scene. He said, I'm so glad we had something that fresh. And, and I'm, I'm the same way. I will always, my philosophy on directing is that I have to be the final arbiter of ideas. It finally comes down to, it, it's my name on the show as a director, be it anime or stage. <clears throat> but I am not such an egotist to think that I am the only person with good ideas. I work very collaboratively. I want, I'm like, does that feel right? Does that, does, that, does that work for you? Does it look okay for you? And a lot of actors are like, whoa, I'm, I'm allowed to have an opinion. I'm like, yes, if you work with me, you need to have an opinion. I, I want ideas because my bottom line is I would not do that my god they'll scream that throw things maybe no the, the screaming has been fun for me because of a trick Mike McFarlane taught me Mike McFarlane taught me the, the trick and it's actually I get called in to play a lot of monsters they use me a lot at ADV because I have this sound that comes out oh. that the other actors can't. And what you do is you flatten your tongue and you raise the back. Ah. Which takes all the strain off your cord. Well, I realized that by rolling my tongue back and forth, you can go <laughs> I can do that all day and not hurt my cords. Well, the nice thing with these, these changes is I don't just spend the entire time screaming. It's like, ah, 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 ah. And the nice thing with Freeze is he's also laughing here. A lot of them I'm laughing hysterically mid transformation, which is nice. Then I can breathe and I can change it up. And so I'm not having just go, ah, ah, you know. That would suck. That would. That would, uh, professionally, that would, that would be what we call a suck moment. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't get that benefit. I, I, I have to scream. From the from the voice and, yeah. and wreck those chords. So, do, you, do you think they'll ever make a Dragon Ball movie that doesn't suck? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if they if they were going to, it would have been the first one. Yeah, you know, they they're not going to. It's just you know, give up hope. Yeah, please, you know, hope. <laughs> They're, they keep making all these movies based on uh, beloved anime and cartoons that just they ruin like the last year of Nerd. Dragon Ball. I think there, there's a reason that Matt Greenfield and I talked about this. I was very, until I saw the preview, I was very, very, everybody knows what a fan of Gantz I am. Uh, 
And I would be a fan of that show even if I was not involved in the anime. <clears throat> because it's a dark show and I love dark. Um, I was very, very against them making an anime. A, 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 a live action game. Uh, I've actually seen the previews of the trailer and it actually looks interesting. I, when, when it comes out, I, I definitely want to check it out. But here's the reason. And Matt Greenfield, I think, hit it better than anyone else. There are some things that when you see animated in two dimension, look really cool. But if you were to see that done with live action actors, it would just look stupid. That's where computers come. Even, even so, even seeing, seeing what looks like a real person doing it would just look dumb. And that combined with wanting to save money on storytelling and stuff like that, which, which is the other which is the That's other the problem. problem. They didn't even try on the Dragon Ball movie. It was horrible. No, they didn't, but I, I think... The problem is most movies are made by committee. Most movies are made by committee. Right, and this is, this is, my, this is my opinion. And, and yes, movies are made. Movies are made by committee. They should be. They need to be. It's a business. No. I don't have a problem with that. The problem is, it's by definition of the adapted source. It's not made by one committee. Yeah. It's made by two or more committees. Yes. Yeah. Because follow. You just not follow the trail. Got a manga, which springs forth an anime, which springs forth an American adaptation, which springs forth a Hollywood adaptation feature film. That's yeah. four different committees of yeah. people all throwing in their two cents into a gigantic pile of poop. Well, have, have you, have you, have you yeah. ever, have, and I was talking about something, I agree with you on that, I was talking about something slightly differently. Have you ever heard Kevin Smith talk about when they wanted him to make the Superman film? Yes! <laughs> yes! Like in particular, when Peter Uber asked him to write uh, in the Fortress of Solitude. Yes. 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 What about polar bears? Yeah, polar bears. What about polar bears attacking in the Fortress of Solitude? Yeah. Or the giant spider, which then, mm. later, he needs a comic sidekick. No, it's Superman. Superman. He doesn't need a comic sidekick. Oh, we should have, he went on to do uh, Wild Wild West, which had the giant spider and the comic sidekick and all that. Right. 